The American Academy of Pediatrics is recommending all students over the age of two wear masks when schools reopen this fall. The group says kids should be back in classrooms, but considering most school-aged children are not eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine, coupled with the decision not to track student and staff vaccination statuses, they say masks should be worn regardless of whether they have had the shot or not. Dr. Jeffrey Sterling is the founder of Simcoe, Illinois. He joins us now with more on the new guidance. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. It's great to be with you again. Good to see, good to talk to you too. So let's get your opinion about this mask mandate. A lot of parents are reluctant to put masks back on school-aged children. Say they're not much of a risk. Well, I mean, you have to move one step past your nose. Now, there, there's more than one conversation. If the conversation is risk, then that point is well taken. Kids are at a dramatically lesser risk than the incapacitated or those who are immunocompromised or the elderly. However, as long as transmission continues to be per perpetrated, perpetuated, you are going to downstream create more cases, more t hospitalizations, and then more deaths. So if we want the pandemic to continue, then we'll keep doing what we haven't been doing very well. If you we want to get our arms around this thing and stop it, we'll use all the tools in our toolkit, which does include masking. So to be clear, you, you think that kids should be wearing masks in the fall, all children everywhere? There's no harm to doing it, and that's the point. This is not even a sacrifice. It's just a preventive measure. And if the conversation is going to be about what's in the best interest of all of us and how we're actually going to finally get rid of this pandemic, then the answer really should be an emphatic yes. And I'm so happy that the American Academy of Pediatrics is having this conversation because you really need an unfiltered voice to combat those voices that may be tainted for political or public relations considerations. It's actually a good thing that we can talk this through. I think it was the CDC director who called this now a pandemic of the unvaccinated. And I guess my question is, how do you get, if there's certain portions of the population that are not interested in getting the vaccine, what would the motivation be and how do you turn that around? Well, quite frankly, at some point in time, everyone can and will be touched, even if not directly through friends and family. And in as much as the um, pandemic is now affecting specific areas as our friends, loved ones, or even ourselves become infected or reinfected because, you know, these variants are different than the original strain. As people that we know and are in our community start to get touched by this, that has a way of changing people's perspectives and making them more knowledgeable about what the risks are and more willing to do what's necessary to end this. You said earlier that there is no harm in having children wear masks, but many parents are arguing that there is harm in having them wear masks with stress, with anxiety, with the discomfort of having to wear a mask that they had to do all last school year. So, uh, you know, many parents, again, arguing that they don't want their kids to wear masks. And we can be creative to address those concerns. If indeed um, there are those that are stressed by doing that, then we can get creative. This is about risk reduction, not total risk elimination. You can make it a game. You can come up with um, measures by which the risk is minimized. So again, this isn't an either or, there's a both and, and I think we have it within us to be creative to address individual concerns. We have to focus on the opportunities and the challenges, not the obstacles. There is a vaccination event this weekend that includes additional health screenings and free school supplies. It's at the 87th Street Center. That gets started at 8 a.m. You can find more information at allergyasthmanetwork.org. Uh, Dr. Sterling, thanks for being with us again. We appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Be well. You too.